When we talk of the remembrance of Allah, one of the most important factors is to clean your heart. What will the remembrance of Allah do for you? It makes you conscious of the rest of the creatures of Allah. Their struggles are known by none other than Allah. So when you see people, instead of passing a comment of judgment, you'd rather pass a comment of encouragement. Because we need that encouragement too. There are so many examples in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ of people who may have been struggling to, towards getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but a deed or two of theirs was more beloved to Allah than every other deed they've done. Such that Allah ignored the bad and gave them paradise. This is the remembrance of Allah. We have to ensure that we realize the gift of Allah. And this is why the dua that is to be made by a Muslim is mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. And we are now in the days of Hajj. We're already in the months of Hajj. You know, there are three months known as the months of Hajj. Do you know what they are? Immediately after Ramadan, Shaban, is it Shaban? Shawwal, come on guys. Shawwal, Dhul Qi'da and Dhul Hijjah. Shawwal, Dhul Qi'da, Dhul Hijjah, those are the three months of Hajj. Right now we're about to commence the month of Dhul Hijjah. And Allah speaks about some dua. What is a dua? Dua is a supplication. You call out to Allah, I call out to Allah. We all call out to Allah. What do we call out to Him for? For our needs, if he wanted, we would not have been in any need. But Allah created us such that we have needs. So that he can test us. Who are you going to call out to? You call out to Allah. For what? All your needs. Number one, what I need urgently and immediately. What do I need? I need something to be able to live, to eat, to breathe. That's what I need. I need the ability to pray, the ability to do good deeds. I need that ability, that capacity. So your physical health, your, your economic, the, the little uh, financial situation that you're in, you need it solved. You need something so that at least you can live a decent life. And the problem is once we live a decent life, you know how man is. He always wants to live a more decent life. He wants a little bit more comfortable. I have a friend who bought a Range Rover. I told him, lovely car. He says, wait until I get my helicopter. <laughs> I said, okay. Guy, ask, we haven't even dreamt of this Range Rover and you're busy thinking of a helicopter. But it's fine. It's one of those things. It just goes to prove that, you know what? People are on different levels. The Range Rover, the helicopter will not take you to Jannah unless you use it in the right way. And unless the more you get, the more humble you become. The more you reach out to people, the more you greet. Don't worry about what the world says. Greet. Learn to greet. One of the biggest sicknesses we face today is the fact that we don't greet. I can tell you I've been to cities where the non-Muslims have greeted me more than the Muslims. Subhanallah. Non-Muslims look at you. Hello. Hi. How are you? Have a good day. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. And the Muslims just look at you. And after a moment, they, they, they recognize you. Is that Mufti Meng? Oh, Salaam Alaikum. You now want to greet me just because you, re you recognized who it was. Not at all. May Allah help me first. May I become from among those who can clean my heart. And every one of us learn to love one another. True remembrance and the benefit of it will only be when you love one another. That's why the Prophet ﷺ was addressing his companions. He says, You see, before I translate that hadith, let me go back to another hadith. The Prophet ﷺ says, The people of paradise and the people who will be VIPs on the day of Jannah will be so many categories. And one of those categories from the seven is those who love each other for the sake of Allah. Do you know what loving each other for the sake of Allah means? I love someone because I know Allah made them and they are trying, they are trying to get closer to Allah in some way or another. And even if they're not, I would love to see them come out of that sin they may be involved in. So I will work in my own way to get the message across to them. 
Because the Prophet says, لَأَنْ يَهْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجُلًا وَاحِدًا خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنْ حُمُرِ النَّعَمِ for Allah to use you to guide one person towards this goodness and guidance is better for you than humr in naam actually means the red camel. And the red camel was the best and most expensive means of conveyance at the time. You know the Range Rovers and helicopters we spoke about moments ago? Something like that. So better for you than your heli. Better for you than your little private jet. Is if Allah used you to guide how many people? How many? One, one. That's the hadith. So work on yourself to be able to address people who might be seemingly astray in a way that when you talk to them, they remember Allah. That's why when the Prophet Muhammad read the Quran to us from the verses he read was the story of Moses, Musa alayhi salam. You know what he says in the story of Musa alayhi salam? What Allah says, Allah narrated it to us. Who was he sent to? The worst of all. The worst of the time was a man known as the Pharaoh. Even the Old Testament has this. That Pharaoh, Allah says, we sent the best of the time to him and we told the best of the time. The best of the time was Musa alayhi salam, the prophet Moses, may peace be upon him. Allah says, we sent Musa and his brother Harun alayhi salam to the Pharaoh, Fir'aun, who was the worst. And we told them, فَقُولَا لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنًا لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ أَوْ يَخْشَى Go to him and speak to him with soft speech. Soft speech. He didn't say go to him and start insulting him and swearing him and judge him and say... They all knew who the Pharaoh was but there was hope. That perhaps he might turn to Allah. So Allah says, you go to him, speak to him with soft words. That means something palatable, something beautiful, something soft, something lovely. Speak to them with some beautiful words. Speak to him with beautiful words. Why? Perhaps he may be reminded or he might become conscious of Allah. Which means you guys watch your words. And as for him, Allah already knew what was going to happen. But Allah didn't say, I know that the Pharaoh is not going to believe, so don't waste your time going there. Because Allah knows that by you going there, you're fulfilling the instruction of Allah, so you're going to get the reward. Whether or not he gets or she gets guidance is up to Allah. Today, none of us can claim to be better than the Prophet Moses, Musa alayhi salam. Not one. And none of those were ever going to meet or come across, including the biggest enemies of Islam on earth today, can be worse than the Pharaoh himself. Because the Pharaoh used to say, Ana rabbukumul a'la. I'm your God. I'm the God and I'm the highest. وَقَالَ فِرَعُونُ يَا أَيُّهَا الْمَلَأُ مَا عَلِمْتُ لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرِ The Pharaoh told his people, Oh my people, I don't know of a deity. Fit to be worshipped by you besides me. A'udhu billah. A'udhu billah. I don't know of a deity for you to worship besides me. That was the height of tyranny. So none of those we're going to ever meet can be worse than the Pharaoh. And none of us can be better than Musa alayhi salam. So don't you think we should be speaking to everyone with a greater concern, with a more beautiful speech, with more softness in our approach. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam again in a verse. Allah says in the Quran, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكِ It is because of the mercy of Allah. It is due to the mercy of Allah that you are so lenient with those around you, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. If you were harsh and hard-hearted, they would have dispersed. They wouldn't even have wanted to listen to Muhammad So what was the sign of the mercy of Allah? Leniency. Leniency. I ask myself, and I ask you to ask yourselves, are you lenient? If you are, the Quran says, 
it's a sign of the mercy of Allah upon you and all those around you. Are you a lenient person? Or are you harsh and hard-hearted? And you know what? You need to ask the people around you, am I lenient? I can see the men looking at me. They, it's, it's like they're going to go home and say, am I lenient? <laughs> Take it easy. Do I look like I'm harsh or hard-hearted? They're going to say, no, not at all. Not at all. Because they're going to be, <clears throat> there's going to be trouble if they say anything else. But what you do, you have to find out from those you live with how you are. Find out from those who live in your house how you are and change yourself. It's a sign of the mercy of Allah. When we talk of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I promise you my brothers, my sisters, when we talk of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to keep on repeating things because that is part of the remembrance of Allah. How am I going to be reminded about Allah when someone hasn't repeated things? The Quran says, وَذَكِّرْ And remind. Remind meaning repeat things. Why? فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ For indeed the reminding, the constant reminder benefits those who truly believe. If you truly believe, you don't get irritated that this man's repeating this for the fourth time. But you feel within your heart, I think it must be so important. That's why he's saying it again.